Hello, citizens of planet Earth. This is Dr. Reeves, back for another exciting adventure in neurology education. Today, we're going to talk about essential tremor. Now, it goes by a number of different names, benign essential tremor, familial tremor, familial essential tremor, different combinations of that. But essential tremor, or ET for short, is uh, the most common uh, name for it. Now, essential tremor is typically genetic. And so we very commonly will see somebody who, when you really ask around, somebody else in the family has it or had it. Sometimes, though, you'll have a family where there's a whole bunch of people and they all lived really uh, a long time, so we would have seen if they got it, but there's just one guy who got it and we don't know why. Maybe that's just where the mutation is starting in that, in that case. But commonly, uh, it runs in a family. An essential tremor is uh, characterized by a tremor, you know, I call a static tremor. When you have your hands in a static position, or you're doing a slow movement, particularly if you're like holding a soup on a spoon, or you're holding the newspaper in front of you and it's kind of, the, the paper wiggles and such. So when you're holding your hands or activating the muscles of your hands and forearms, uh, they tend to they have this very fine, irregular tremor. And the, the thing to look for, in fact, this is really important in differentiating essential tremor from Parkinson's, is that when you, in Parkinson's, when you, uh, when you put the arm at rest is when the tre tremor tends to be the worst. And in essential tremor, when you put the arm completely at rest, the tremor goes away. If you look at the tremor under a magnifying glass, and there actually are people who like to do that, uh, you find that the tremor often goes in multiple different directions in a kind of irregular pattern. So it's rather more fast and irregular than Parkinson's. Although, if it gets pretty bad, essential tremor can be fairly large amplitude and look more regular. Now, uh, essential tremor is due to some circuits in the brain, brain stem, spinal cord, if you will, wearing out. If, so that's, that's kind of how I think about it. They're sort of programmed to wear out uh, faster than they should. And we don't have anything that stops that. So when it comes to talking about medication for essential tremor, we're not talking about medicine that's actually going to slow the progression of the disease. So it isn't a matter of, oh, you better take treatment earlier or the tremor is going to be worse later. No, not that way at all. So whenever I find someone with essential tremor, uh, we kind of talk about what it is. We talk about what it isn't, not Parkinson's. It's not going to put you in a wheelchair. Uh, very uh, unlikely to put you in a nursing home or anything uh, significant like that. But, uh, you know, we, we talk about how this will slowly progress. But come back when you need treatment, when you, when you want to take medicine. And until it gets to the point where you want to try to take some medicine to reduce the amount of tremor that you have on any given day, uh, until, you, until that point, then, you know, see you later. So the medicines we have, there isn't really, there really isn't a single medicine for essential tremor that works for everybody. There isn't a single medicine that makes the tremor go completely away. And there isn't a single medicine that was really kind of developed for treating essential tremor. We have this kind of grab bag of medicines, some heart medications, some seizure medications, blood pressure medications, that kind of stuff that were invented for other reasons. And somebody started taking the medicine and they came back to their doctor and their doctor said, hey, how are you doing on that new blood pressure medicine, Leroy? And he said, well, I think my tremor's a little bit better. And you know, sure enough, it was. And so we kind of have found that a number of medicines seem to get uh, get in the system and sort of change some of those circuits. So remember this tremor, uh, uh, you know, soup on a spoon or putting you know, sugar in your coffee, writing uh, becomes difficult because you're, you're using those fingers and you're kind of trying to hold that pen really steadily. Um, they tend to become a bit of a problem. Now another thing you'll see with essential tremor over, the, over time uh, particularly is uh, uh, if you do what we call finger nose finger testing. Now my, my hand's really close here, it should be further away. But, but what you see is as you're reaching for something, the tremor gets worse. So as you get closer, so there's some, some tremor there the whole time, but then 
you know, as you're reaching way out and, and just trying to pick something up that's barely in your reach, you get an increase in tremor. Now the tremor, uh, interestingly, about half of people who, um, that's my, my 12 year old trying to sneak over into the kitchen and get something to drink and she thinks she's being quite quiet about it. No, so. I don't think that. I'm trying to be as much of a disturbance as I, as I know that. So about half of people find that if they have a little drink of alcohol, that the tremor is transiently improved. Now, obviously, that's not a great treatment, particularly if it's going to lead to drinking lots of alcohol because that's bad for you. So can't really say I recommend that as a treatment. About half of people find that it doesn't matter. If they have a drink of alcohol, the tremor is no different. The tremor tends to worsen over time. And that's part of that degenerating uh, aspect where those, those circuits are degenerating. But, you know, I, I often say this, uh, I call a central tremor a nuisance tremor. I'm not downplaying how much of a nuisance it is, but I call it a nuisance tremor because it, it's not going to, you know, it doesn't put you in a wheelchair like Parkinson's can. Um, but it will be a nuisance the rest of your life. And... I, I talk about because it's degenerative and the circuits are wearing out and they continue to wear out over time that the tremor is going to get worse but it's not going to be like you wake up you know two weeks from now and oh my gosh the tremor is a whole lot worse uh, it's more like it's going to get worse by the year or by the decade so definitely if you start with uh, essential tremor in your 65 um, by the time you're 100 or 110 probably going to have a pretty significant amount of tremor and we'll be happy to see you then. Now it's quite curious about who who gets it and who gets it not so much in families and by that I mean uh, genetically we know that like, there's a single gene and yet it's expressed very differently in different people. So what's that, what, what do you mean? Well you might have a family where uh, mom and dad have 10 kids and because it's genetic and it's autosomal dominant about half the kids, so about five of the kids are going to inherit that gene. So it's, let's say mom has the essential tremor. So about half the kids are going to have essential tremor. So but of the five that have essential tremor, you know, maybe Susie started with a little bit of essential tremor in her late teens and it very, very slowly progressed over the course of her life. Maybe uh, uh, Clyde had no tremor at all until he was in his late 60s and then um, he had a, developed a significant amount of tremor between 67 and when he died at 85. Uh, and then uh, sister Martha, maybe she had the tremor come on in her 40s and you know it kind of perked along a little bit. And so you know, we know it's the, it's the same family, we know how everybody got the, the gene, it's one gene, yet in this person it started in the teens and that person is 60 something, you know, and all points in between, and we don't really know why that's the case. But there is a rather variable manifestation. So, going on. Uh, some of the medications that are used include drugs like acetazolamide, uh, heart medicines that are we call beta blockers, propranolol is the most common one. It goes by the trade name Inderol often. Um, all the beta blockers and, and in lol and so sometimes we use natalol or, or metoprolol and it can help the tremor. Mycelene, also known as primidone, is a uh, barbiturate seizure medication which used in tiny doses uh, often helps the tremor. If we're giving the medicine for seizures we're often giving the 250 milligram tablets. Uh, when we use tremor uh, when we're treating tremor, we usually use the 50 milligram tablets. So sometimes those help. There's an old uh, water pill called Neptazane that uh, sometimes is helpful. Some people get some benefit out of uh, Topamax or also known as Topiramate. Now there is another treatment for essential tremor that's worth talking about. And fortunately, that treatment is not necessary for most people. And that's called a deep brain stimulator or DBS for short. And the deep brain stimulator is, uh, uh, there's an electronic device, it's implanted under the skin, kind of like a pacemaker. And the wire goes under the skin and we have neurosurgeons and neurologists who under computer guidance put 
the tip of the wire down into a certain part of the brain, deep in the brain, and stimulate it, deep brain stimulator, and that turns off, turns down, the tremor in a large percentage of people. Um, it doesn't make it go away. And of course, doing a, an invasive procedure like that has its risks. So clearly this isn't for everybody. And you would never think about that uh, for somebody who had a mild or a moderate amount of tremor and it wasn't really that disabling. But occasionally, and I mean occasionally, we do have people who developed essential tremor relatively early in life. It has perked along over the decades and they're really starting to become uh, significantly impaired. It's hard to feed themselves. It's hard to, to dress. It's hard to, to do activities of daily living. And by the time they're 65 or 71, and they're otherwise pretty healthy, um, and the medicines really aren't doing a whole lot anymore. It, those people, it's reasonable to think about a deep brain stimulator. Uh, and I have, I have patients who, who um, even on medicine, had, had tremor that had gotten to the point that it was like this, and with a deep brain stimulator, it kind of became like this. And that's obviously not tremor-free, but there's a big difference in trying to drink the, the cup of coffee when you're doing this and, and when you have a smaller amount of tremor. So it can make a significant difference in quality of life. So to, to summarize, the essential tremor, typically genetic, although occasionally you just find the, the oddball person, nobody in the family has it, slowly progresses over the years or really kind of over the decade. Um, typically not really disabling, but it is definitely a nuisance. Typically affects the hands, although there's people who get essential tremor of the head more than the hands. And they, you may have seen the people who are kind of have the yes, yes tremor or the no, no tremor. So it's, it's another manifestation of the same entity. Um, I would like to make one other statement, and that is that no cats were harmed in the production of this video. Schrodinger's cat refers to a thought experiment of experimental physicists about the uncertainty of states of atoms and whether they decay. So if you're kind of a science geek like I am a little bit, this shirt's actually pretty funny. A little bit. Because the back says Schrodinger's cat is not dead. Thanks for watching. Be healthy. Hi, Marble. You're alive, aren't you? You're not happy about being up here, but you're alive. <laughs>